Hello, I'm Gabriel with Pure Power Pools and I wanted to show you a, a tie-in at the pool equipment. So here we have our pump. The re pressure's coming in here. It's coming out the bottom. We have a check valve here so that it doesn't push DE back into the pool. Comes up here and then this is the three-way valve which determines whether water goes to the solar to solar or if it comes back and into the heater and oh. again a check valve here to prevent it from back flowing through the return line yeah that's the return the solar. from solar yeah this is check return valve. from yeah. solar and this standard is yeah supply to solar that's a standard tie-in yep. sending all the flow do you ever adjust that valve to... The only time we adjust that is if we have a pump that's going to push too much water. Here we have a variable speed pump, which we can control with the Easy Touch system so that um, it controls the flow. So we can actually determine the, the, the gallons per minute that goes through the, the system. That way we don't need to have any bypass. Beautiful. So that's an Easy Touch controller. Can we take a look at that? Yeah. Pool automation is complicated these days. Yeah, so the pool automation here, um, you can determine when solar comes on, what the variable speed pump will, will push, and then when solar turns off, it'll go back down to a determined speed. Uh, priming speed is an issue, right? Yeah, so we disable priming at the pump, so there is no priming speed. Because those um, things come, as I understand it, you're the expert, but they come with the priming speed set at full speed. You got a three horsepower going full out. Yeah. Yeah. The um, the best way is we take, uh, we, uh, the, we'll have the pump run uh, start up at 7 a.m. That way we know solar will not be on. Mm -hmm. And we have our cleaner speeds outside of solar time as well. That way the only thing that's going to run during solar time is filtration or the solar. And we can, that way we can regulate pressure on the system. And cleaner speed being when the vacuum operates. It's correct. a suction side vacuum that's in this correct. case. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. And in San Diego, they're on most of our suction side cleaners. Gotcha. Beautiful. So Gabriel was showing us a system where all of the flow went to a motorized valve. It wasn't motorized in the in the video, but it would be uh, if you didn't want to send as much flow through solar as the full flow then what you do is adjust the cams on the motor, as he said. Uh, because you don't want to put too much flow through solar because that just costs you in extra pump power, costs you electricity. So another way to do that, rather than adjusting cams, is to actually do it mechanically with a, th with a valve, a two-way valve, a bypass valve. So we add a bypass valve to the plumbing and that allows us an easy way to adjust the portion of flow that goes to solar when solar's on. Okay. So Mike will show you how that's set up and how that all operates next. This is our flow from the filter back to the pool. This check valve here keeps the water from flushing back into the filter when you shut the pump off. These two ball valves can be closed to isolate the system for winterizing. This three-way valve chooses solar on or solar off. These are your drain plugs which can be left out for winter. This is a clear check valve which allows you to see the flow from solar back to the pool. In this configuration, the way you start the system is with the three-way valve turned to solar on. Then we can adjust this bypass valve until we see a large number of bubbles entering the pool. We'll also be able to see the flow in the clear check valve. This is manual control. Normally your three-way valve will be turned to solar on and you control the system using your pump timer running the pump and therefore the solar when the sun is on the collectors. You have to turn the valve manually. If the pool gets too hot or if the weather changes. We can bolt a motor right onto this valve if we want to automate the system without changing any of the plumbing. For automatic controls, you leave your pump running all day and the valve would be controlled automatically depending on the temperatures. Now solar controls operate on a differential. That is a difference between the solar sensor and the pool temperature sensor. 
The solar sensor goes on the roof usually, but it doesn't have to. It just needs to be in the same sun at the same direction, the same shading, and the same wind exposure as the solar collectors. When the solar collectors are off, they get hot in the sun. That's what we're trying to mimic with the solar sensor. When that temperature is about 9 degrees warmer than the pool temperature, solar can turn on to add heat to the pool. It's interesting that competitors simply use a probe sticking up in the air. This doesn't look like the solar panel. We use our own solar sensor made of our own piece of solar panel material. It can just glue to the roof or, or as I said it can be located anywhere as long as it's in the same sun as the solar collectors. So a solar pool heater will operate automatically. If you're in a freeze zone you have to winterize, follow the instruction manual, get the water out of it. Normally it will be set up so that it automatically drains down most systems. Uh, sometimes on a flat roof, for example, you might have some drains on the roof that need to be opened if you're in an area where it freezes. A lot of places where we have a lot of these systems, we don't really get into a freeze. But remember, it only takes about 42 degrees Fahrenheit on a cold, clear night to freeze a black radiator with a night sky. It's not a problem for our collector because it's flexible but the manifolds and the piping can still freeze. Now normally they're not going to freeze unless the temperatures drop below 32 degrees of course, uh, but other types of collectors you have to really watch this because a rigid panel uh, can't freeze. If it freezes it, the water will expand and it will burst, so you have to be very careful of that. Uh, winterizing, normally you shut the pump off, let everything drain down, close your isolation valves, or if you don't have them, you just shut solar off and rely on the three-way valve and the check valve to keep the water from going back into the solar plumbing. I like to get those isolation valves in there just in case you have to service it, just in case there's a problem. You've got a lot of piping. What if the piping gets smashed? You want to be able to circulate your pool while you're servicing your solar heater. Other than that, there's not really much you have to worry about. Uh, if you want to check to make sure your collectors are operating efficiently, you simply feel them across their width. Uh, don't do that if you're not uh, capable of working on a roof safely, of course. Uh, you can tell because your pool temperature comes up. That's one good way to know that your solar heater works. Look at the performance curves on our website under the sizing section, and you can see what roughly your pool temperature should be at at any time in the year. Uh, give us a call anytime. Uh, check out the general instructions on the website, there's lots of information there, uh, lots of other videos as well, and we're here to help as needed, so give us a call or email. Thanks for watching.